Welcome back to Keeping It Real. I'm David Grossman. We're shooting live here from the kiosk at Dufferin and Steels on our network, alltalktv.com. Thanks for being with us. I'm very delighted to introduce you to Hamid Bashani. Uh, Hamid is a real estate lawyer, but he's also a talk show host here on our network. We were introduced to real estate agent Tariq Sultan from Remax, and I thought... Um, I thought Amid was going to come in and, and talk about real estate. I was, I was blown away. I mean, this man is a historian. He's a scholar. Um, and he's, he's, he's doing this show. It's called Third Opinion. And he's done two episodes so far. And talking a lot about the uh, India and Pakistan war. And I have to, you know, as a typical Canadian, I have to admit, I was not, history was not my strength. There's so many things going on around the world that, people, they just, they're so busy in their regular lives. So I thought it would be good to take a few minutes to let people know. And especially, probably a lot of our viewers know you, uh, having worked with you before in, in real estate. And now's an opportunity for them to see a whole other side to you. So, um, Hamid, first of all, um, how did you become so well-versed? And this talk show is not the first time you've been on air doing uh, talk shows, talking about these kinds of subjects. What's your, what's your background in, in TV and how did it all start for you? Well, thank you very much, David, for uh, inviting me here. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's a very long story, if I can have that much time to explain, <laughs> but uh, I started writing newspaper columns like 15, 20 years ago. That was back home in Pakistan. Yes. And when I immigrated to Canada, I started working with the newspapers to write the columns in the Urdu, of course, Urdu newspapers in North America. Right. One of the largest Urdu language newspaper is the Pakistan Post. And I have been writing for that paper for the last uh, 10, 12 years, regularly. And then Omni TV, I started talking about those issues which I was addressing in my column. They invited me weekly to go and to talk about those issues because a large amount of people, they speak Urdu, Hindi, you know, mm -hmm. it's very similar language. And they thought it's very interesting to share that uh, uh, whatever I'm writing. Right. So on every Saturday, I used to go and I still go on Omni TV Urdu show, which mm -hmm. is uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, in the Saturday. And uh, that's where I st got into TV. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there are many people who are running the shows in Urdu language in Mississauga, in Toronto. They also started inviting me to give comments on different issues. Right. So that's where I got into this uh, kind of situation. Okay. Yeah. So the issue, um, as I understand, I did a little bit of research on this. So the um, India and Pakistan were split in 1947, I believe, yes. and they've been they've been fighting ever since. Kashmir is one of the things that they've been fighting about. Who should have control over Kashmir, as I understand it? Can Can you tell us a little bit about um, about the conflict and and what is your what is your view on it? Well, it's very complex and very lengthy mm -hmm. conflict. You know, right. it's more than 50 years. Uh, they have been fighting, is a kind of cold war situation there. It would be very difficult for anybody to be brief on that situation right. because you need lots of details. But just to give a little idea, in 1947, when the British, uh, they left uh, Indian subcontinent, at that time, Indian subcontinent, it has two kind of uh, legal entity. One was British India, which was ruled by the uh, British directly, and one was princely states. There were 565, around 62 princely states. They were kind of semi-independent states run by the Maharajas and, you know, the local kings. So when they left Indian subcontinent, obviously it was going to be divided between India and Pakistan, two mm -hmm. new countries. And they gave option to the princely states to join one of them either yes. India or Pakistan. Right. And they believed that the states with the Muslim majority would go with Pakistan and with the Hindu majority should go with India. 
but it didn't actually work that way because when the people started fighting on different issues, on ethnic groups, on religious issues, at that time the Kashmiri leadership, even though they have Hindus, they have Muslims, they have Christian, they have Buddhist, all kind of people there, but they, that was secular leadership. So they decided to not be the part of Pakistan on the base of religion. At that time the monarch Maharaja Hari Singh, mm -hmm. he decided to not be the part of Pakistan or part of India. So he decided to be independent. So he signed an agreement which is called standstill agreement with Pakistan saying that I want to keep my situation as it is and uh, he gave some services to Pakistan because of their road links and things like that. But later on this standstill agreement was violated by the tribal Malaysia from the Pakistani side who entered into the Kashmir and they started fighting. Right. From that point, that was in 1947 October, from that point India and Pakistan they are fighting on this because Maharaja at that point invited India to Kashmir to protect the people of Kashmir and the state from that tribal invasion. So India came on 27th of October 1947 in mm -hmm. Kashmir and they started fighting with the Pakistani forces and the state was divided into two parts. One is called Azad Kashmir meaning free Kashmir and one is called Jammu and Kashmir which is with India. Right. So after that this issue was taken to the United uh, Nation for resolution and you know there were many promises, mm -hmm. many conferences, many proceeding on this issue but it was never concluded. So since then they have been fighting on this issue. They have fought four wars in 1947-48, 1965 and then 71 and then Kargil war uh, recently. Right. And still there is a kind of a big threat to the peace because both neighbors they are nuclear power mm. and big armies. So I think this is a very, very important issue which should be resolved. Yeah, and we, we don't hear uh, enough about it I think in the media. Uh, not recently, like mm -hmm. around uh, 10 years ago it was a big news in the media but now it's getting a little bit slow. Right. What would you like to see happen? Is there a way that you think this could be resolved? Uh, I think there is one principle which we have been talking since 1947 and that's principle of the right of self-determination of the people of Kashmir. So people they should decide through democratic mm. process. It could be through vote, it could be through some other way where people wishes and their will should uh, come up. And I think it's very important for India and Pakistan peace process that they resolve this issue because each time when they negotiate any peace, peace treaty or they talk about uh, question of peace, question of war, then the Kashmir question comes up. Yes. So it's very disturbing not only for the people of Kashmir but also for whole Indian subcontinent because right. they are spending too much money on their armies, on nuclear, nuclear arms, mm -hmm. you know, so this conflict is just taking all the economy and future of the people, you know. Yeah. Too much bloodshed and then as exactly. you say, being superpowers, yeah. uh, it's a very dangerous situation. Nuclear powers, yeah, very yeah. dangerous yeah. situation. Uh, being nuclear powers, right. Yeah. Um, so now when did you uh, st uh, take your law studies? Did you do them in Pakistan or here in Canada? <laughs> That's a very interesting question that I did my law study twice. So I went oh, to yeah. law school two times. Right. Once I went back home uh, when I was a young person. So I did my law there and then I came to Canada. And I had to go back to University of Ottawa to do my upgrading and things like that. Right, yeah, because I, I, I know somebody else who moved here from the States and they had to take pretty much the entire thing. It was uh, very onerous. So at least people, people know that y you have double law degree, so that it's like they're protected uh, even uh, twice. Uh, yeah, in some ways it's helpful, right. especially for the people who are coming from the Indian subcontinent, so they know that we know the law over there. Right, right. And also here, and uh, when I did my law school over there, it was common law, so it's the same actually, education is exactly the same. 
because that law school it was started by the British at that time. So they have the same textbooks and things like that. Right. So yeah. now you have found your niche, it seems, in real estate. What what do you like about real estate law? Uh, actually, I think when I started practicing law, I was doing just general practice, and I still do. Mm -hmm. Right. I do family law. I do business closing, lots of business closing. But real estate was something which came because of everybody's into it. So I was so busy into it that I didn't have time to do anything else. Right. But with the passage of time, I really liked it because of many reasons. You know, the, uh, you always deal with very decent people. There are very interesting issues. I also do the real estate litigation. So I really like it. So... Um is there anything that uh, you would offer people, if they're real estate agents or viewers, any uh, suggestions or tips, things that they, I mean, we, you could come back, probably we can dedicate a whole section, uh, session to talking about uh, real estate law. But I thought it was important to take some time to, to learn more about you and um, about also this uh, important issue about India and Pakistan. But uh, before we close out, can you, can you offer maybe uh, tips to uh, people if they're buying or selling, things that they should know or things that they should look out for? Actually, there are hundreds of things, you know, which you look into when you are going to complete a real estate transaction. But as a lawyer, I think there are many things which we should be looking for, like doing the proper searches, dealing with the issues, title insurances, to make sure that the transaction is not fraudulent, mm -hmm. that we do when they retain us. And then I think at the same time, a lot of work is done by the real estate agents. They yes. should do their own due diligence. So I think the system works in a way that uh, the consumer, they are completely protected. Once you go with the professionals, with the real estate agent, with the real estate lawyer, and you do your own search properly that you are going to the proper lawyer, because there are many real estate lawyers around, but not all of them are fully trained or with that kind of experience which you really need to complete your transaction. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been really nice talking with you. And again, I'm, uh, I'm delighted that you're working with us here at All Talk TV and, and that we have this opportunity to produce your uh, wonderful talk show called Third Opinion. Do you plan on expanding Third Opinion to talk about any um, real estate uh, or law issues as well in the future, or do you want to keep it uh, political uh, in nature? Actually, Third Opinion is a very politically oriented program, social, political, kind of very, very serious issues. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, actually convert that into this. Right. But I'm looking forward to cooperate with your uh, program to see where I can bring this discussion in. Right. And uh, thank you for inviting, and I really appreciate it's that. It's my pleasure. Well, I, I know that uh, if, if anybody needs a real estate lawyer, that uh, Hamid Bashani is somebody who will take very good care of you. Uh, he is a scholar, and he's a gentleman. Thank <laughs> so you very much. Thanks so much for uh, coming in and being part of the show today, Hamid. I, I really appreciate it. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk with Jeff Ginsberg. He's an email marketing guru, and uh, this should be very interesting. Very hot, very important topic. If you are marketing, especially if you're thinking about online, and that's where it seems the world is turning, is online email marketing should be a, a part of your formula, and you need to know how to do it right. So hang in there. We're going to talk with Jeff coming up just after this break. <laughs>